Hey guys, hope you enjoyed yesterday's video. That one was a lot more effort for me to make. It took most of the day to film and edit it. So um, I'm not gonna be doing those all the time, but um, maybe once a week when I go to the range and like have a free day to, to do a cool video. But anyway, um, today will be something shorter, but I had a bunch of triggers together and I did some um, data collecting on pull weights and reset weights on all of them. And the way that I tested the reset weight was I took my trigger gauge and basically I, I pinned it back, I, I charged the handle, and then I slowly let the gauge out so that the, um, the weight on it, the spring went from you know, higher to lower, and then I would note the place where it clicked back and finally reset. And it was usually around the one, or under one pound mark, but some of the triggers have stiffer resets, which I think actually helps, um, helps you shoot faster. So uh, the ones I compared were two ECLs, two Hyperfire 24Cs, um, one Hyperfire EDT and one Hyperfire PDI, and two AR Golds, one was the PCC version in flat, one was the AR version in curved, and then a stock trigger in the JP GMR15 that I'm borrowing, and the shitty mil spec trigger on my FM budget build. The thing that, that got me thinking about this was I've always seemed to gravitate towards the ECL, but I haven't really measured it and, and found out why. And I had this hypothesis, but I wanted to, to check all these triggers and, and see if I could come up with some cool conclusions. Let's talk about the AR Gold PCC first. So I think it's a very good option if you like how the AR Gold feels. And it does feel amazing. Like if you were to dry fire this trigger next to the ECL, I would take the AR Gold every time. But for some reason, shooting live fire, I always felt a little bit more comfortable shooting pairs with the ECL. And I wasn't exactly sure why, but I thought it had something to do with the reset force being stronger. Because the AR Gold has a very soft reset force. So sometimes it's hard to pull the trigger fast and I ended up getting more trigger freeze with the AR Gold. My theory was that it's better to have a higher poundage trigger with a reset that's also very forceful and close to the uh, pull weight than it is to have a lower poundage trigger where the reset force is almost zero because that makes it harder to avoid trigger freeze. Let's go over the results here. So I just wrote them down on paper. I'll show you what they look like, but the ECLs, um, I was surprised actually how much they outperformed the 24 C's. So the ECLs were consistently about a half pound, um, like a half to a quarter pound lighter than the 24 C's. And all these triggers have, have got a lot of use. Two are in Lynn's guns, they're in her Terran Ultralight 223 and her MPX. And my two are in my guns that I cycle, but between the Foxtrot and the QC10 lowers. And yeah, those have got a lot of use. So these are well worn in. And my ECLs are pulling at about two pounds with a 14 ounce reset. And that's a, a difference of about a pound. Like on, on one, I had a stronger reset. And then the 24 Cs, they were at uh, more like two and a quarter in the, in the regular rifle, but then in the MPX, I don't know if it has to do with the receiver shape or something, but the MPX had a much stiffer reset and much stiffer pull, like a half pound more on each. So it was like the same difference, um, about one and a half pounds or 1.65 here I put. Not sure why that is, maybe something to do with the receiver, but um, maybe you guys have different experiences. So the new Hyperfire PDI, I'm sure a lot of people are, are wondering about that. Um, my first impression of it was not great. Like my trigger freeze freaking like shot through the roof, um, which it always does coming from an ECL to another trigger. But with this one, it's really, really hard to, to overcome it, like way harder than transitioning from the ECL to the AR Gold um, because the, the length of pull is so long on that thing. Like it moves very far back and forth. Um, so it's still light, it's a, it's a very light trigger, but you do have a little bit less reset force. So we're at 10 ounces on the reset and two and a half pounds on the pull. So you have about a one and seven eighths ounce, uh, or pound, sorry, one and seven eighths pound difference between the pull and reset and the PDI. I'd recommend saving your money and just buying the HyperTouch Competition, which is the new name for the 24C. Um, it's like $45 more, I think it's definitely worth it. Um, ECL, if, if you uh, want to spend the extra. I was actually surprised, yeah, how, how much lighter and more forceful the reset was on the ECL. And I think that has something to do with just the, the coating on it. There's less resistance, both pulling the trigger and the trigger not having to rub against anything as the, uh, the trigger bow pushes back on your finger um, during the reset. 
So now let's compare the ECLs to the AR Gold. So the AR Golds um, had very consistent pulls and, and resets, but they were a tiny bit heavier than the ECLs, at the same time a tiny bit lighter than, than the 24Cs, but the pulls were at about two and a quarter or two and an eighth. And then the resets were extremely consistent, like a little less than six ounces on both of them. Like I couldn't, I couldn't tell exactly where it lined up, but it was definitely less than six ounces. So I just put four to six ounces here. Um, extremely light reset, almost no reset force. Like you have to do that work. You have to definitely move your finger off of that trigger and stop applying force to it in order to get it to reset. The benefit of the AR Gold is that there's almost zero travel. It's like half the travel of the ECL. So once you get that rhythm down, it's like it's very easy to do that quickly. But um, if you're coming from the ECL where you kind of rely on the trigger to push your finger off, you're going to have a, a rough time transitioning at first, which is what I've noticed like every time I come from the ECL. Then let's talk about the, uh, the EDT actually. So the EDT and, and the JP Easy Trigger were the other ones that I threw in there. The EDT, uh, which was the budget one I mentioned in the other video, that one pulled at about a little less than four and a half pounds. So it was at four and three eighths. And the reset was um, very strong on this one. So th this one had the strongest reset of any of the triggers here, um, which I think it was like 20 ounces or more, right? Yeah, it was like, it was like 20 to 22 ounces uh, on the reset. And that's like one and a quarter to one and three eighths pounds. So even though the pull uh, was kind of heavy compared to these other triggers, I feel like you can shoot this one really fast because you have a lot of force there that's assisting you in getting your finger off. So you can kind of keep some pressure on and the, the amount that you have to change the force you're applying between shots doesn't change that much. It's only a three pound difference. And then the JP Easy Trigger, I think it's the JP Easy Trigger, which is the one that comes pre-installed in this uh, Ready Rifle GMR-15. That one, I was, I was a little surprised at how heavy it was, but maybe that's because it is a Ready Rifle, not like a, a tuned competition gun. Um, and you can probably tune that yourself too and probably put a JP reduced power trigger kit in there. But this one was pulling at about four pounds or a little less than four pounds. And then the reset was relatively strong, it was the same as the ECLs, not as strong as the EDT, um, but it was 14 ounces. So that gives us a difference of about three pounds again. Um, and that trigger is awesome too. Like that probably has a similar travel distance to the AR Gold. Like, it hardly moves it all back and forth. So you can shoot that one really fast once you, when, when you get accustomed to it as well. And then the last one's the shitty mil spec trigger in the FM. This one just pulled super heavy over seven pounds and the reset wasn't even that strong for that amount of pull. Um, it was, yeah, 12 ounces, so three quarter pound. Um, huge difference, six and a half pounds. So that's why that one's so hard to split fast because you actually have to make that muscular change of over six pounds of force um, you know, going from like over seven pounds to almost zero to over seven pounds to almost zero. And it takes a long time to do that um, versus some of these other ones. So I think this is pretty, pretty illustrative because the ECL is by far just the least difference between the pull and reset force. And that kind of makes sense to me. It's, it's what I felt, what I've always felt put on paper. Um, I don't really know why I've never done this until now. That's why I think this 60 day challenge is cool because I'm starting to like um, present things to you guys and that forces me to do a more thorough investigation of it rather than just thinking you know that's probably how it is. Let me know what you guys think, what triggers do you run and if you have the means like if you have a non-electronic maybe you could do it with an electronic spring gauge but or um, trigger gauge but if you have the spring gauge do some tests and see where your uh, activation and pull weights are and let me know in the comments or reply to this um, tag me in a story or something and uh, we can start filling in like the rest of the data and figure out um, why it's easier for us to split fast with some triggers versus other triggers. Yeah, so that's what I got for today. I'll see you guys tomorrow.